One man in the backfield. That's McCoy. Now Wentz. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. A gain of four on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. I think the best offenses love to give the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Let's go! Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And he'll get across the 20, but only to about the 22-yard line. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Here's the option going right. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. So on fourth down, the Eagles will call on the left foot of Donnie Jones to punt it away. Fielded at the 20. Whoosh. Oh, he did it again. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. And they will be led out by a man in his sophomore campaign as the quarterback. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And this defense feeling the encouragement. They stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon. The offense on your screen now, and Todd Gurley on your screen. That is the back of the present and the future. And what an amazing return for him from a knee injury his last year in college at the University of Georgia. Now, it's like it never happened. There's nothing he can't do on the football field. And if you're a defense, that's a long day trying to prepare for Todd Gurley. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. He's got a man. It's his fullback. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. It's a four-yard pickup, and they're going to face a third down. And the defense now for the Eagles. Eric Rowe fits the profile of the so-called new breed of cornerback in the NFL. A college safety with length. He transitions very well to the corner in the league. It's third down, six yards to go for the offense. Looking to throw. He's got time in the pocket. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style, where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it, but aren't necessarily that position. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. 
not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, they run with Gurley. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard run. Leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Partner, a lot of people think the tight end's a safety valve position, but I think in situations like this, he's often a primary receiver, and they missed an opportunity there. Yeah, missed an opportunity indeed to pick up the first. Now it's Zerline to try the Ram field goal. This from 54 yards away. has the carry it does not it's no good and this will remain a scoreless game and there is nothing easy about being a kicker on a day like this yeah i tell you not only is the footing tough in the snow but kicking that ball is like kicking a rock very difficult to get any sort of feel on your kicks Start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. So we've reached the end of a fairly even first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we're back to Philadelphia after this. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. example of why they haven't scored any points so far. I think it's time to abandon the run game, spread things out, and go to the air. It certainly can't be any worse than what they've done so far. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Third and long, it's Wentz. He's got time. And that is incomplete. Holding defense. That's one of those ones that is so hard to judge, but defensive holding there, that's what the referee saw. So here we go, first and ten now. After the penalty, it's McCoy. Coy so shifts past him, and he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick, and shifting can make moves make people miss but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down that's some of the benefits of that speed not just outrunning people in the secondary and that led to a really nice game Check. 
Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. McCoy. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, holding them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They'll come out in the pistol. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. Adrian Amos up to make the tackle. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. From the gun on third down, Wentz. And this is caught by Jackson. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Two minutes remain in a scoreless first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. A reminder coming up at halftime while the two of us head for warmer areas of the press box. Yes. We'll be sending you to Orlando where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half. Send me to Orlando, please. Don't, don't be so soft. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Into the red zone, Wentz. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Macklin. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Let's go! Green, 39! Wins to throw on second down. And that's going to be caught for an Eagles touchdown. Deshaun Jackson from 10 yards out. And the Eagles are able to cash it in for six. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. Now, after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. On the return, this is Denard Robinson. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. 
Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Five eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Fletcher Cox with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And a catch made by Kenny Bread. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. They'll look to throw here. Completes it right side to Brent. And now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep is Darren Sproles. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. of seven defensive end gets in there that time they were in a 4-3 what's the responsibility the ends versus the tackles there charles well most of the time when you talk about the ends they're your pass rushers they're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football the tackles usually more of the run stuffing variety but the way this game is advanced you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys but let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple the guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback that's the blind side He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Both the Eagles and the Rams are not doing much on the ground. 
and it's easy to see why that would play into this low-scoring game. We'll have to see if either team gets it going on the ground in the second half. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Eagles on second and seven. They'll look to the end zone here, and that goes as a 10-yard touchdown. That puts them up by a touchdown. Rams with the ball late in the half. Cox has got to get to the quarterback here. This goes for a loss of nine. Still late in the first half. Quinn showing skill here to get to the QB. This will go for a loss of seven. here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And the Rams now coming out on the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. The third quarter starts with a run by Gurley. And he is going to lose yardage here. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different, try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick-started. They'll come out in the pistol. Another carry now for Gurley. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Partner, I think the easy thing now would be to just abandon the run and start throwing the football at all costs. But I've been in so many games where it doesn't work running the ball, doesn't work running the ball and then something pops, and now you get something going, I'm not so sure to just abandon your game plan this early in the second half. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. He'll look to throw. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say, I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. 
They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They come up in an offset eye. They'll try and get the running game going with McCoy. And McCoy loses the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. So they almost turn it over there. Scary moment, second down here. Here's the option going right. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end of the half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. And they'll keep it on the ground with McCoy. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. That was a good, strong run there. And while it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. Second down following the run. carry now for McCoy and they're able to get this one across the 35 a nice pick up there 10 yards and it'll move the sticks well it's what we call an even front or an odd front and an odd front's real easy to figure out if that guy is lined up over the nose of the center typically that's an odd front defense odd number of people meaning three four versus the four three which is an even front you've got to control those guys in the middle whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams' defense. Alec Ogletree in there to sack him for a loss of six. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. And here comes play number six on this drive. On second down, it's McCoy. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Give him three yards on the run. Now they'll need to drop something good here on third and 13. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. 
six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. A dump off to Sproles. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Give him three on the play, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Donnie Jones now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And now a high kick here as he'll try to cover this one. Just a 25-yard punt. Not what he was hoping for by any stretch. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. They'll come out throwing here on first down. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. So the offense has it first and 10. for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Now Sturgis on to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Now Damian Williams to return it. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out.
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. Call it a one-yard gain of the play, and that'll bring up second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time is going to run off the clock. Second down now after the pass completion. throw over the middle that's caught by Hogan four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down short play like that in this situation this late that's a win for the defense no doubt and I remember something coach Madden used to talk about all the time sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you you have to take what you need and in this case the offense is taking what the defense is giving them not what they need time for a break we'll come back to wrap this one up after this So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. Right, Expecting Three, pass. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw, and he dropped it. Now it was tipped, altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it, and now fourth down. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Bust like that at just about every position, and sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away, and that's exactly what happened there. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. It's complete to Britt. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now a play fake here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. to throw again. He has Brett over the middle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. They'll look to throw here. The throw left side complete to Hogan. Holding offense. And that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. And the penalty now makes it first and 20. Again, he'll drop to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Only two yards on the completion at second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Here we go now. 
They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country Let's mile. Go. to throw again and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact incomplete and there was a good opportunity to just want to ride there a drop pass I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs all right they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down they're going for it Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Eagles are likely going to win it. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Rams defense heading back onto the field. They did their job last go around, forced the punt, hoping for more of that here. They got off the field. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Get off the field, turn the ball over to their offense, and kick back and enjoy a little bit of water and rest before they have to go back out there again. Back out there now and hoping to hurry up and get more water and rest. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Keep it on the ground with McCoy this time. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And the Rams are going to go ahead and take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Eagles in the victory formation as they take an E. Hey, four down, four down. 
So third down, and defensively, the Rams have added two extra DBs. Wentz with a kneel down, and that will be the final act of this game. Well, partner, there's something special about a game in the snow. Just always fun in these elements, although a little chillier up here in the open-air booth. The only thing that's not fun is that we got the mid-game notification that our flight was canceled tonight, but we'll deal with that later. It was really a fun game to watch, though. It was, and there is something special about games played in the snow because the element of surprise really kicks in. You don't know how they're going to handle the ball, if someone's going to make a dramatic play just out of nowhere, and all of a sudden it just changes is the course of things but a big shout out to our crew to make sure that we were comfortable up here as comfortable as one could be in these elements they took care of us and made sure we were dressed properly That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Eagles are winners here as we say so long from Philadelphia.